how to display a different number on each digit of the 7 segment display. My name is Grady, I'm with Simply Embedded and today I'm going to show you how to create a 7 segment display controller. So let's get started. So let's get started by creating a new project called 7 segment display controller. For this project we will need a clock divider module which we can import in from the blinking LED tutorial that we did last week. If you haven't seen the blinking LED tutorial yet, go check it out by clicking on this card and following the link there. You can also import in the XDC file from the blinking LED project. So go ahead and do that and let's move on. For this specific project, I put together a system block diagram. From the block diagram, we can see the overall top module, which is used to wrap together all the modules. And then we can also see a clock divider module, refresh counter module, anode control module, BCD control module, BCD to cathodes module. Since we already have the clock divider module, we only need to create four additional modules. The goal of this design is to make sure that we can display different numbers on each digit on the 7 segment display. So in order to do that, we need to create these modules. Otherwise, we were only able to display one identical number on each digit. The refresh counter is used to create a counter that counts from 0 to 3. The counter values then input it to BCD control and anode control, which then choose which anode will be turned on and which digit will be displayed at the same time. BCD stands for binary coded decimal, where each decimal digit is represented by a fixed number of bits. In this case, we'll be using four bits to represent a decimal number. The reason why we're using BCD is that for the seven segment display, if you want to represent a number, for example, 125, you can't just represent it by writing 125 and expect 125 to be illuminated on the seven segment display. You need to pass those values in by each number separately. So you need to represent one in binary and then two in binary and then five in binary. So all of those numbers need to be represented separately with a binary coded decimal. So the BCD control module will be used to pass through BCD value for a corresponding digit. So only one BCD value will be chosen and that will be passed through to the BCD to cathodes module, which will then turn the one digit BCD value into a number on a seven segment display by turning on certain cathodes. The reason why we need a clock divider is that if the refresh clock is too fast, the numbers will blend in and there's no way to tell which number is currently displayed on the 7 segment display. At 10 kHz, the clock is still fast enough to trick the human eye into that the digits are on at the same time, even though the digits are displayed one at a time based on the refresh counter value. But now, Let's go on and start creating the modules. All right, so let's add some sources for this. So based on the block design, we can go ahead and create four new modules. So we can go ahead and create the refresh counter module. We can also create the anode control module and the BCD control module. Last, we'll make a BCD to cathodes module. Let's start off with creating the refresh counter module. So you can start off the module, write in the inputs and outputs. So we're going to have one input refresh clock and one output for the refresh count value. Always at the positive edge of the refresh clock, you're counting up. So refresh counter equals to refresh counter plus one. And that's it. Let's go and create the anode control. So we're going to have the input from the refresh counter. Let's set it up. And then we're also going to have an output for the anodes. So we want to make sure that each anode is turned on based on the value of the refresh counter. In this case, we're using a case statement. So based on each case of the refresh counter, we can assign values to the anode. So if the refresh counter is zero, the rightmost anode will be turned on. And when the refresh counter is one, then the next digit is turned on. And when the refresh counter is two, Digit three is turned on when refresh counter is four, digit four is turned on. Digit one is the rightmost digit and digit four is the leftmost. All right, let's move on to the BCD control. We have an input, digit one. We're gonna do the same thing for digit two, three, and four. 
So we're gonna have one output, one digit. So in this case, what, what is happening is we're choosing which digit to display when the corresponding anode is turned on. So we're choosing, so if we have four values for each digit, then all of those values are not turned on at the same time. We're choosing one of those. So we're gonna create another case statement based on the refresh counter. So if the refresh counter is zero, we're displaying digit one value. And we're, when the refresh counter is one, we're displaying digit two value. When the refresh counter is two, we're displaying digit three value and so on. So it's very important to make sure that these are in sync with the anode control. So that's why we have the refresh counter to make sure that at case zero, when refresh counter is zero, the corresponding anode for digit one is turned on and the corresponding BCD value is passed through at the same time. So for BCD to cathodes module, we can set it up with one input digit that needs to be converted to cathodes. So we need to set up the cathodes so that we can display an actual number. So we're gonna have 10 different cases from zero to nine. That's 10 different numbers that we need to display. In order to display any number from zero to nine, you need to figure out which cathodes to turn on for every number. You can check out the seven segment display tutorial by clicking this card right here. So make sure you check that out if you're not sure how to do that. Other than that, let's move on. We wanna to go to the clock divider module and change the clock signal. Since we had one hertz signal earlier, we wanna modify it so that we now would have a clock divided signal of 10 kilohertz. We can do this by reducing the local parameter division value by 10,000 times. After you've done this, we can continue and start wrapping all the other modules into the top module as well. So everything would be combined and tied together based on the block diagram in the bottom right corner. Honestly, I'm not very uh, creative with the names of the wrappers, but that's fine. So make sure you have all the wrappers organized properly. Once we have everything set up, um, we can create a test bench file, set up the test bench. We can copy inputs outputs from the top module, change the inputs to registers and, and the outputs to wires. And then we can create a a unit under test for it as well and a clock signal do an initial begin and uh, set up everything for a um, simulation. So you can go to scope and objects and drag in some of the inputs and outputs. As you can see from the simulation the the expected values for the cathodes are uh, showing up on the proper time. When you actually run the code on your board you will be able to see a little bit more information about it. I'd recommend thinking through the system and ask yourself, why do we use a refresh clock? Why can't we display all the digits at the same time? Why do we have to display them one at a time? Think about all these aspects and then you can put the picture together. Make sure you also think through the code and how it works and why did we make these connections and is there another way we can do it? Can you do it in another way? Let me know in the comment sections below if there's another way you can do it. Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. I truly appreciate it. If you're new to this YouTube channel, consider subscribing. And if you like this video, of course, like this video. Leave a comment in the comment sections below if this was helpful. So keep up the good work and I'll see you next time.